In 2017, the first wave of the DCEU wrapped up with Justice League, the culmination of two movies. Well, BVS seemed like nine movies in one, but you know what I mean. Justice League was the superhero team up people have wanted to see for decades, so did it live up to the hype? It's time to take an in-depth look at the film, but first, let's take a look at the Justice League's epic journey to the big screen. Believe it or not, back in the 90s, the Justice League did actually debut in live action. Yes, it's true. The ill-fated TV movie Justice League of America aired on CBS as well as Channel 5 in the UK in December 1997. This movie was bloody mental, with a horrible script, horrendous costumes, and critics calling it the TV show Friends with superpowers. Merry Christmas! <laughs> this movie was a real blemish on the Justice League legacy, and it was a full 10 years before a live action league was considered again, with director George Miller taking on the project and getting as far as casting his team. Miller was looking to cast DJ Contranaz as Superman, Army Hammer as Batman, model Megan Gale as Wonder Woman, rapper Common as Green Lantern and Jon Stewart, Adam Brody as The Flash and Barry Allen, and Santiago Cabrera as Aquaman and Arthur Curry. However, the film was shelved during production. It's probably for the best too, I mean Army Hammer is 32 years old right now. Back in 2007, he was 21. Might as well cast him as Robin, not Batman. Holy whiskers! Fast forward to 2012 and shortly after the filming of Man of Steel was complete, Warner Brothers hired Will Beale to write the script for a new Justice League movie. Warner Brothers president Jeff Robinov explained that Man of Steel would be setting the tone for what the movies are going to be like going forward. The film included references to the existence of other superheroes in the DC Universe and set the tone for a shared fictional universe of DC Comics characters. After the release of Man of Steel in June 2013, Goy was hired to write a sequel as well as a new Justice League, with the Will Beale draft being scrapped. The sequel to Man of Steel was indeed the very controversial Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, featuring Henry Cavill as Superman, Ben Affleck as Batman, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, and showing us who would go on to be the other members of the Justice League Ezra Miller as The Flash, Jason Momoa as Aquaman, and Ray Fisher as Victor Stone or Cyborg. Of course, the heroes were introduced through videos that Bruce Wayne discovered on the dark web or some shit. And of course, The Flash was discovered through that god-awful dream sequence, which haunts my dreams to this day. <sighs> Then you have to learn to move on. In April 2014, it was announced that Zack Snyder would direct the movie. Warner Brothers were reportedly courting Chris Terrio to rewrite Justice League the following July. On October 15th, 2014, Warner Brothers announced the film would be released in two parts, with part one released on November 17th, 2017, and part two on June 14th, 2019. Snyder was set to direct both films. Still waiting for the second one, guys. Never gonna happen. <laughs> In early July 2015, it was revealed that the script for Justice League Part 1 had been completed by Terrio. In May 2016, it was announced that Jeff Johns and John Burge would produce the Justice League films and would also be in charge of the DCEU, after the largely negative critical reception to Batman v Superman. In May 2017, Zack Snyder stepped down from directional duties during post-production of the film to properly deal with the tragic death of his daughter, Autumn Snyder. Joss Whedon, who Snyder had previously brought on to rewrite some additional scenes, took over to handle post-production duties in Snyder's place. In July 2017, it was announced the film was undergoing two months of reshoots in London and Los Angeles, with Warner Brothers putting about 25 million into them, more than the typical 6 to 10 million additional filming costs, which brought the budget of the film up to 300 million. Jesus. The reshoots coincided with Henry Cavill's schedule for Mission Impossible Fallout, for which he had grown a moustache, which he was contracted to keep while filming. Fallout director Christopher McQuarrie initially gave the producers of Justice League permission to have Cavill shave the moustache in exchange for the three million it would cost to shut down production on Fallout and then digitally fill the moustache in. Executives from Paramount Pictures rejected the idea. Justice League's effects team was then forced to use special effects to digitally remove the moustache in post-production. And it looked god awful. Look at that. The state of that. What a tit. I wanna die. In February 2018, months after the release of Justice League, rumours began to abound that the real reason Zack Snyder was alleviated from director was because his version was deemed unwatchable. For me, this is a very harsh thing to speculate considering Snyder's terrible loss at the time, which was clearly the reason he left the project. However, after the mixed reception to Whedon's Justice League, many people are now speculating on the Snyder cut. 
desiring to see it and thinking maybe just maybe it was better and the movie Snyder was trying to make all along for DC. I'm interested in seeing whatever Snyder came up with, although I know we probably never will. In June 2017 it was announced that the man, the myth, the legend Danny Elfman would do the music for Justice League. Elfman used the Batman theme music from the 1989 movie, which is one of the most epic things about the entire of Justice League. John Williams Superman theme also appears when Superman first returns as evil Superman to fight the Justice League. Justice League premiered in Beijing on October 26, 2017 and was released in the United States on November 17th. With an estimated production budget of 300 million, Justice League is one of the most expensive films ever made. The film grossed 657 million worldwide against a break-even point of 750 million, becoming a box office bomb and losing the studio an estimated 60 million. Justice League received mixed reviews. It was praised for its action sequences and acting primarily by Gal Gadot but criticised for the screenplay, pacing and CGI, as well as its thin plot and the underdeveloped villain. It currently holds 40% on Rotten Tomatoes, but there were a few critics who enjoyed the movie, including Richard Roper of the Chicago Sun-Times, who gave the film 3.5 out of 4 stars. Appearance, you have the appearance of a human being, but in <laughs> fact, you are a, an android. Well, you're Roper praised the cast, especially Godot, saying it was executed with great fun and energy. Owen Gleberman of Variety also gave the film a positive review and wrote that Justice League has been conceived in each and every frame to correct the sins of Batman v Superman. One of the many scathing reviews came from the Washington Post as Alyssa Rosenberg said the movie feels identical to so many of the superhero movies that have come before and that it features some of the most ugly, pointless special effects ever seen on film. Justice League continues on from the ending of Batman v Superman with Bruce Wayne experiencing a massive amount of guilt after Superman's death prompting him to decide to put a team of heroes together to battle any coming threats to humanity. Batman and Wonder Woman hastily end up recruiting The Flash, Aquaman and Cyborg to form the Justice League and face off with the supervillain known as Steppenwolf, who arrives with a bang and unleashes a catastrophic attack against the planet. For me, Justice League is a real hit and miss movie. It had too many expectations on its shoulders and still had the looming cloud of Batman v Superman over it. People by this point had given up on the DCU. They just had. Despite the massive success of Wonder Woman, Batman v Superman was so despised that no one was willing to give this universe a chance anymore. I mean hell, even DC knew when to quit. Nowadays they've just gone a completely different direction and are just making standalone movies in an attempt to regain people's trust. Almost feels like Justice League was made because they had to. They wrote themselves into a corner so much that the film had to at least be attempted. It's a decent superhero movie but it is deeply flawed and suffers more from the fact that it's called Justice League. Fans have been waiting to see Justice League for decades. I might even go as far as to say that many fans wanted this more than the Avengers. It's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg teaming up. It's a truly iconic and epic premise. This movie had no choice but to be one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. And if you couldn't deliver on that, then don't even bother. There's even a fraction of chance you think you could disappoint. Just don't do it. All you're going to do is piss off the fans that have spent their lives waiting for this film. The movie has a real feeling of being cobbled together and rushed, which seemed to be the case with all these early DCAU films. A lot of the elements are here and work well, but they should have been spread out over several films in order to actually make a meaningful impact. I really like the scene where Bruce first goes to visit Aquaman, but that could have been an after credits scene at the end of a Batman movie to build anticipation. I'm not saying DC should have entirely copied Marvel, but hey, if you're going to do a superhero cinematic universe, at least follow their template but put your own spin on it. Don't try to skip ahead and just expect us to care. The names of the heroes don't sell on their own anymore. I think fans have got to the point where just because The Flash is in a movie, or Batman, or Wonder Woman, they're not just going to automatically care. Those days are gone, and what a relief. Nowadays, we as fans expect a lot more and DC certainly found that out the hard way. DC should have realised that literally throwing all these characters at you all at once, debuting them in the team up movie before getting to know them, would be overbearing and far too much to take in. And it certainly was. Here's Aquaman, here's Cyborg, here's The Flash, all at once. You love it, right? Please care, please care, here it is, look, please care. It's almost like DC were that girl or guy who you go on one date with and then you get home and they're blowing up your phone saying, let's move in together, let's get married, let's have kids, look, bloody hell, all right? We only have one date, Jesus. The league themselves range from great to god awful. Of course, Ben Affleck is good as Batman, but I must say, he does look a bit lost in this film. I think Sad Affleck had really affected him. He realised he was on a sinking ship. He just needed a cuddle, bless him, poor lad. Gal Gadot is the best performance in the film. She becomes the glue of the Justice League. 
Of course it comes across as stupid when she's reeling off her pearls of wisdom to a bunch of people she's only just met. It's the Suicide Squad problem, the movie tries to convince us these guys are friends, family even, when they've only known each other 10 minutes. However, the exchanges between Diana and Bruce do indeed work, because we know for a fact these two have built up a friendship after Batman v Superman, helping each other out and becoming the allies we know them to be. It's still odd to me that Diana and Bruce are so affected by the death of Superman, they only knew him a bloody day. I guess it was more the idea of Superman they missed than the man personally, and the film does do well in showing us the effect the way he treated Superman has on Bruce. He feels guilty for, well, trying to kill him, and feels responsible for his death. This stuff is interesting, and I commend Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot for having lots of dramatic chemistry in these scenes, and helping us care about the relationship between Bruce and Diana. I actually think it's one of the few well done relationships in this incarnation of the DCEU. The Flash in this movie, quite simply put, is a load of old arse. Nothing against actor Ezra Miller, but this performance is diabolical. He is up there with Jesse Eisenberg for god awful DCEU performances. In fact, he is possibly the worst written and performed moment in any DC movie ever. Look no further. Wow, it's like a cave. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. Ezra Miller isn't playing The Flash, he's playing Robin, and not a good Robin. Robin from Batman and Robin, he's playing that. He also acts like he's friends with the Justice League too soon after meeting them all. This would not happen, you've just met three of the biggest superheroes on the planet as well as a cyborg human and you're telling jokes every five seconds. You wouldn't be making jokes, you'd be like, what the fuck, tell me about yourselves. It's a shame too because The Flash actually does lots of cool things in the movie. He has several moments to shine, he saves people, helps bring back Superman with his powers, uses his speed in an interesting way. Also really like the animation when the Flash does use his powers, I think it looks cool as hell. I just wish I didn't hate the guy. The ingredients are there, action and animation wise for the Flash, but the performance and the personality is just terrible. Seeing the Flash and Cyborg digging up Superman's grave in this movie also gives several scenes in Batman and Robin a run for their money as being maybe not the worst but the most nutty superhero scene ever. For me it is pretty darn insane to see the Justice League mixed with bloody Friday the 13th part 6. They're literally digging up a grave, two of our heroes. This is bonkers. I really don't think we should have seen them dig up the grave, it just seems a bit odd. I mean I know they had to do it but we don't need to see it. Seeing members of the Justice League bloody grave robbing, it's just bizarre. Cyborg played by Ray Fisher, again the fundamentals are there but he's just not fleshed out. It's impossible to introduce the character of this magnitude into the biggest superhero team up movie of all time without any build up. It's just not going to work and I'm so baffled the filmmakers thought it could. The elements of a good story are there for Cyborg. He has a very interesting history and it makes you want to see a cyborg movie and Ray Fisher really makes you sympathise with the guy and root for him and he is certainly one of the most unique heroes ever on film but he joins the league too easy and before you know it he's just another member cracking jokes every five minutes. We need you Victor and maybe you need us. I'll do fine alone. I told myself the same for a long time. I lost someone I loved once. I shut myself off from... from everyone. But I had to learn to open back up again. The truth is, I'm still working on it. And if you agreed to meet me... you're working on it, too. Trust me, Victor. I actually like that scene, but then five minutes later Cyborg shows up and he's changed his bloody mind. It's like, okay, my two minute chat with you Wonder Woman changed my entire outlook on life. I've got my own shit to deal with, I've got my dad fucking me up in an experimental room. But I'm gonna go and risk my life for a bunch of assholes I never met. My point exactly. Aquaman is cool as hell, but I do remember struggling to care when I first saw him in the movie. The DC movies back here were all out of whack. We needed the Aquaman movie before Justice League then we care about Aquaman in Justice League. Aquaman is shot extremely well, he looks and feels like a badass and this was a wonderful new take on a character that people struggled to take serious. It was the perfect way to update and introduce him to movie audiences. J 
Jason Momoa looks iconic, you believe him in the role. Aquaman chugging beer, beating the shit out of people and then diving into the sea. How can you argue with that? For me the best Aquaman scene is when he saves the league in the sewers by stopping the area from flooding. How can you dislike the guy after seeing this? It's an exciting and impressive scene for this character and really sets him apart from other heroes and makes his abilities that people used to laugh at seem awesome and cool. Now this isn't necessarily an issue with Justice League as you'd probably run into this problem in any film you tried this in but it's in Justice League so how do they explain Clark Kent also dying and also coming back from the dead at the exact same time Superman died and came back from the bloody dead? I mean this is getting ridiculous now I mean we could just about believe that Clark wears glasses to disguise his identity just but then he comes back from the dead at the exact same time as the bloody Man of Steel. Clark Kent comes back from the dead. Clark Kent fights back from the grave the exact same time as Superman. You might as well not even wear the glasses, Clark. I'll just go fuck it. I'm not going to wear the glasses. They'll believe anything at this point. I must admit, the scene where Superman is resurrected and he momentarily turns into evil Superman for Superman 3 is pretty darn cringy. Of course, we have Henry Cavill's famous CGI removed moustache to contend with, but we also have a really bad performance from the actor in these brief scenes. Personally, I find these scenes laughable. And of course, the only person who can stop Superman from destroying the League is Lois, who returns, played by Amy Adams. Because as we all know, Henry Cavill Superman cares about nothing in the fucking world but Lois. She is the only way to stop the fucker. She defines every single thing he does. If she wasn't there, Superman would have probably destroyed the League and then burnt down the fucking world. However, the scenes where Lois and Clark reunite are very nice and sweet. Cavill and Adams always had chemistry, and you are happy for the characters that they get to be together again. These moments are very heartfelt and romantic. He does spend a bit too much time with her though, while the world is going to shit. Hey Supes, save the world first, then shag later, that's how most heroes operate. The League are in trouble and Superman is too busy getting jiggy. However, he does show up eventually and he appears to now be the Superman we always wanted him to be. You're all too weak to see the truth. Well, I believe in truth. But I'm also a big fan of justice. Well, look who decided to show. About time they started writing like Superman Henry. Only three movies in, mate. At least the DCU got these scenes right. The moment Superman arrives to help the League, he is instantly how he should always be. A beacon of light, a believer of truth, justice and the American way. A role model. Henry Cavill is fantastic and I really feel sorry for the guy because he completely deserves a proper Superman movie. You can tell he has a ball when he is doing the character justice. I just have no idea why this is pretty much the only time they ever let him do it. Sure in Man of Steel there's glimpses of the true Superman, but BVS was just a disgrace. It's great to see the iconic hero back to his best in Justice League and I must admit every single moment of Superman in the culmination battle with this film is pure bliss. I really wasn't a big fan of our villain Steppenwolf played by Kieran Hines. He sounds pretty cool in the comics but in this film he just felt a bit generic. Every line out of his mouth was a conventional villain line and I don't know guys to me he just kind of felt like an inferior version of Thanos. There's nothing to this character. Sure he looks cool, but he has no character moments and all of his lines are cliche. Some of the action scenes involving him are pretty good, but all in all, he's an underwhelming villain who I'm not even sure why they chose to be the antagonist. DC has a very wide and fruitful rogues gallery and this was the best you could do. We could have had Brainiac, Darkseid, Mr. Freeze, Metallo, Deathstroke. I mean I know you had to choose one who could take on multiple superheroes with powers, so you couldn't really go for the Joker or Two-Face. But all of those I just listed would be more than a match for the Justice League and they all sound better than Steppenwolf. Sorry Steppenwolf, but you're a big flaw with this film. I just don't care about you. Now most of this review may sound pretty negative, but you know what guys, I had a lot more fun watching Justice League this time round. Although it's ultimately undeniably disappointing, at least it's much lighter and fun than Batman v Superman. It has more of a cartoony Saturday morning type vibe and it is at the very least entertaining and fast paced. The action is pretty darn awesome too, I mean come on, seeing the Justice League all together kick ass, you can't really complain. It's a wonderful superhero fan experience, even if it isn't unfolding exactly how you'd hoped. Most of the performances are good, other than The Flash of course, and the story is at least a lot more simple than BVS, and was just crafted to be a fun conventional comic book adventure. As a fun, silly superhero movie, it's enjoyable, even to an extent pretty good. But as Justice League the movie, a team up fans have been waiting for for decades, 
This should have been 10 times better. This should have been built up. It should have had an intrigue, spectacle, an epic scale. Characters we had become invested in, finally teaming up. It needed to be pretty much what the Avengers was for Marvel for these DC icons. And it just wasn't on any level whatsoever. And you know what? That is a huge shame. Justice League may not be the worst movie ever made, but it could very well be the most disappointing. Oh shit. What do you guys think of Justice League? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I have a playlist of my other superhero movie reviews that you can click on. And guess what? I'm taking a step away from DC. I'm going over to Marvel for my next superhero review. I haven't decided which movie, one movie or series of movies that I'm going to review next. Could be Spider-Man, could be X-Men, could be Avengers. Give me some suggestions down below guys. What do you want to see me tackle in Marvel? Don't you dare put fan four stick or I'm closing this channel. Well, actually, that might make you want to put it. Obviously, if no one comments, I'll make that lonely decision myself. Sad Affleck, Clive Lake. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I talk about retro movies, superhero movies, and all sorts of geeky movie stuff. So come and join the community, and we can discuss our movie obsession. I will see you guys in the next video.